Hey folks, it's your buddy Mike Messier here on a, I guess it's Thursday morning, Austin, Texas, new location for me, for Mike's Instant Movie Review. I just saw Lisa Frankenstein, a movie that I wanted to see for about a week. I did enjoy it. I think uh, most people will probably like this one. Um, I could see this movie annoying some folks, but I think... A lot of people will like it. It's not... Uh, it's kind of a horror parody romance uh, goth girl fantasy. The goth girl wants her own little Frankenstein monster boyfriend, so she makes one, sort of. First, she puts him in the goddamn friend zone. You know, typical female behavior. She wants to fucking resurrect this guy from the dead. Then when she pulls it off, she puts him in the friend zone for the first uh, two-thirds of the movie. But I guess I'm getting ahead of myself. Uh, so what's this movie all about, Mike? Lisa Frankenstein. Uh, it takes place in 1989. <sighs> Sorry. 1980 fucking nine. It has a very Edward Scissorhands feel to it. The writer is Diablo Cody, who's written a bunch of other stuff. I think she wrote, uh, if I'm not mistaken, didn't she write Juno uh, 20 years ago or some such thing? Uh, so this movie has a definite Edward Scissorhands, tap of the hat, tip of the hat. Also, for all the Hot Topic goth people out there, you'll enjoy uh, the Hawthorne reference, Hawthorne Street. Aunt Shelley, Mary Shelley. There is a Hot Topic reference in there by the Carla Cugino, Janet character. Damn it, Janet. It's one of these movies that's kind of applauding itself in its script. Good job, Diablo. Making all the little pop culture references she can. And, uh, you know, how many fucking goth references, 90s references, well, mostly 80s references. How many can you catch in this thing? A lot. Uh, but I did enjoy the movie. I mean, <coughs> the movie is really trying very hard to be a cult classic. It's trying very hard to be memorizable or quotable or, um, gothable, you know, like it's very much wanting to be in the Rocky Horror Picture Show, Edward Sinser Hands, whatever the fuck else, canon of, of goth chick favorites it's really hoping to be there and i think it probably will be successful in that regard uh i liked it i think um the style of comedy is not forcing the comedy also beetlejuice you know shades of a young winona rider uh elements of romeo and juliet perhaps in the storytelling the lead actress is very good, very funny, very uh, look appropriate for this role, kind of like that wispy, Cindy Lauper esque vibe. Her stepsister uh, does a good job with her role, the evil stepmother. You have your assorted high school shenanigans. Uh, this young lady feels like she's an outsider, of course. Aren't we all outsiders? And, uh,. You know, she, she walks through the fucking graveyard that all the other kids are afraid of to etch uh, fucking love letters to this dead kid uh, who died in the 1837, I believe. And then something happens where th there was a moment in the film, if you've seen the fucking film by now, where she gets uh, basically laced with PCP. Uh, and then she has like this kind of three or four minute little s scenario, like... It's basically like, you know, what her mind's going through on PCP. And she kind of wakes up and she's in this gothic dress and all this crazy gothic shit's happening. I kind of wish the rest of the movie was like that. <laughs> like that, if you see this movie, like that five minutes or three minutes, whatever the fuck it was, that was actually my favorite part of the whole film. I kind of wish the movie was like that for the rest of it. Oh, sorry. You know, just, just tired as a fuck. Been driving. Uh, for those of you that are keeping score, yes, I'm in Austin, Texas now. Yes, I left the opening film night party to come see a fucking movie. Imagine that. 
I guess I just got tired of explaining myself. Well, what's your film at the festival? Oh. Just pitching myself to a bunch of people that are either going to see my movie or they're not. You know what I mean? So just tired of talking about myself, tired of hearing other people talk about themselves, tired of trying to make some goddamn connections to people. I really just didn't want to talk to anyone. See, that's my goddamn inner goth self. You just don't even want to talk to human beings. Just show me a fucking film so I can sit there in silence. I will say that this Regal Theater, wherever the fuck I am in... I don't know where the fuck I am. Wellington, Austin, Texas, some such strip mall. Everything looks the same in America, except the fucking highways. Austin, Texas, I really like Austin, uh, most of it. I don't like driving in Austin. Uh, basically, whoever the fuck, I mean, the story that last time I was in Austin, I was told repeatedly that the person, it was a male gendered person, the man who made the fucking highway system in uh, Austin, Texas, like the man that designed the roads and the interstate, he ended up committing suicide out of despair because so many people were getting in car accidents. So that's the story that I heard, and I fully believe it. It's very difficult to drive in this town. I feel, ready, that Austin, Texas is a place that, like, I think I would be happy to be from, like, if I was, oh, that sounds cool. Like, I'm from Austin, Texas. Wow. Like, to be from Austin, Texas, uh, was that where Dusty Rhodes was from? Like, to be from Austin, Texas is exciting. Uh, to live here, I think, is pretty cool. But to be a tourist, like, moi, is a little bit challenging, if especially if you drove yourself. And I feel like I don't even think I'd trust the Uber or the Lyft fuckers around here. I just feel it's very crazy driving here. You have all these fucking U-turns in the middle of nowhere. You go, you have to make a U-turn, then get over five lanes to, to take your next turn. And every time you're turning, there's some asshole right up your asshole. These people, uh, they don't drive slowly. They drive fastly. They fuck it right on your dick, metaphorically, when they are fucking driving behind you. So I'm just telling you fine folks, I do like Austin, Texas. I do like the people here, but my God, driving here could be dangerous to your health, okay? It's dangerous, and I've been driving for three days. I started driving after the Super Bowl. I drove over fucking night. On Sunday, I drove all, like, Monday, I did not get very far. I was just so tired. Actually, Monday, I did pretty well. I got all the way to Biloxi Beach, Mississippi. It was Tuesday that I just, my driving was just limited because I was just tired. And then today, I had to drive about four or five hours. And then, of course, it's one of those things where, should I take a break to get something to eat? But it'll make my trip go slower. So, you know, you can't win. Staying in a nice Airbnb. I arrived to the Airbnb. There's half a dead lizard at the front step. And uh, the payoff comes later. I go inside. I, I shower. Uh, this toilet that I'm using has a bidet, like a French. I, I know I'm French. I should, like a cat to a litter box, should understand how to use the bidet. I don't even put the thing on. I don't want to deal with this stuff. Uh, there's a strange individual walking around outside, by the way. Uh, so anyway, oh, and then I leave the house and I see two cute little cats sitting in these big chairs and I go out the front door and one of the cats greets me like he's the translator. The other cat stays behind. This one greets me. I sit down, he hops in my lap and he's in my lap for like 10 minutes. So I got this cat in my lap for 10 minutes. And, uh, when the cat finally, and he's got the claws and everything, he's like clawing into my fucking leg. Then when he gets out, like he, sit, he gets off, he starts looking at the fucking lizard. It's like, oh, I see. This cat, like, fucking tore the lizard in half. And, like, here's half a lizard, and here's, and it's not like a little gecko. Like, it's not one of these Florida little fucking cute geckos. This is like a fucking lizard. You know what I mean? Like a six-inch, seven-inch lizard that this fucking cat must have killed at some point. If I had a broom, I would have whacked him into the fucking yard. But I, I have no broom. I don't know what's going on. And what am I supposed to do? Dig around this? This is a private home that I'm in. Am I supposed to grab the lady's fucking broom 
and whack this dead lizard around the fucking front yard? What if that's like her boudoir, like her lady boudoir broom? What if she, you know, cleans her little rugs with this fucking broom and I'm scraping up a dead lizard in the front yard with it? <laughs> so anyway, I met the cat. The cat didn't cut me in half. But what the fuck? Getting back to this movie, I enjoyed it. I mean, uh, to be honest, uh, when I have, I have not been honest to you, I used to spend time with this young woman. She thought she was goth. She would have loved this movie. I'd say she thought because she ended up doing the most predictable thing. She married the Italian boy down the street that she was always supposed to be with. They were uh, married for seven years, then got divorced. So, good choice, sister. Good fucking choice. Nice life choice, right? Go with the easy fucking mark, and you pay the price. Seven years of your life ruined. So anyway, no kids, though. At least they didn't have kids, because then they'd have to deal with that issue. The, me the mediocrity of human beings never ceases to amaze me. Did I mention? How's that for goth bitch shit? Anyway, I like this fucking movie. Like I said, the movie's trying very hard uh, to be in the canon of goth chick cult classics, and it wins. Uh, namely, I would say, on the strength of this young actress, whoever she is, you know, she's got a good look. She's cute, but she's not, you know, overbearingly attractive, if that makes any sense. Like, she, her beauty is in her eyes. Does that make any sense? Uh, very, you know, good actress, and basically, you know, if Winona, I guess you could say granddaughter at this point, if Winona Ryder had a fucking granddaughter, it might be this kid, because I think the actress is probably, uh, probably still a teenager, and uh, she looks like it, she could be 20, but she looks like she's 16, 17, 18 in real life, who knows, maybe she's 20, 21, I don't know, she, I'd never seen her before, I thought she was very good, the stepsister I thought was played very well, there are some inklings. If you see this movie, please chime in. Do you think that the father and the stepsister were uh, fornicating? Is that alluded to? Because when the stepsister had the hickey on her neck, I thought it was coming from the dad. Like the way that she's calling her father daddy or her stepfather daddy and the suspicious eyes from Lisa to her stepsister and her father. And, spoiler... When at the end of the movie, when they go to Lisa's fucking gravestone and fucking, uh, good. And, uh, they're kind of there at the gravestone together. Didn't you feel like they were fornicating? Like, like the, like, wasn't that the pervy, th like, but the dad did not play it, in my opinion, like a perv. In other words, there was no clear tip of the hat like, yes, the dad's a perv and he's just with the stepmom to get to her daughter. But the daughter, the stepdaughter was more calling him daddy in this kind of flirtatious manner and, and kind of suspect manner and so forth. So I don't know. You tell me what you thought, because I thought that there was a subtext of stepsister and daddy uh, fornicating, which... Like I said, it kind of feels that way. The, and they end up going to the fucking Sizzler together. So what does that tell you? Or the Ground Round or whatever the fuck it was. Or Fuddruckers, that's what it was. So it's like one of those movies where like, oh, we have to throw in every fucking 1989 reference we can shoehorn. I do like the fact that it's a 1989 because no goddamn cell phones in the movie. Uh, I was thoroughly annoyed, though. First of all, this Regal Cinema here in Austin, Texas was actually very nice. Uh, unlike the Regal Cinema in Jacksonville, this Regal Cinema had the uh, the, the seats, the, the reclining seats. And I dare say they were bigger and more leg room and more comfortable and reclined deeper than the AMC theaters that I'm used to. So whatever the fuck, everything's bigger in Texas including the reclining chairs in the, the Regal Cinema. So, applause, people, for the Regal Cinema in Arlington, Texas, wherever the fuck Texas, Austin, Texas. I'm looking at all this stuff. Basically, wherever you go in the United States, for the most part, it's like, oh, wow, they have Waffle House here in Delaware. Oh, wow, they have Jack in the Box in Texas. 
Like, the only real cultural differences is the amount of cows, the amount of trucks, and the fast food choices. Everything else is Dollar Tree, Target, Walmart, whatever the fuck, uh, Aspen Dental, all this dog shit stuff. But I like it. I like the comfort of America, okay? I like my air conditioning. I like my public bathrooms that are usable. Uh, I like that there's not a goddamn caste system. I can speak freely. It's one o'clock in the fucking morning on a Thursday, and here I am ranting and raving in my automobile about a fucking goth chick movie, and no one's fucking putting the fucking handcuffs on me or whatever the fuck. So I had a good day, woke up this morning, got myself uh, whatever the fuck, was in fucking wherever the fuck, somewhere in Texas, w Wellington, Texas, uh, drove, was fucking tired, pulled over to some place called... Uh, chick flicks or ground chick or chicken fucking place. I was fucking hardcore. I didn't order the fucking chicken. I ordered the fucking catfish and shrimp combo. And this place had complimentary soft serve ice cream. And I had two cones, motherfuckers. Uh, what else? <sighs> fuck. At the goddamn festival party, whatever the fuck. I'm like, I don't want to eat in front of these people. I don't want them taking fries off my plate. I'm looking for a fucking place. It's the Hideaway uh, Cafe. Okay. So, like, I'll walk. I'll get some fucking exercise. Walk to this fucking Hideaway Cafe. It's another fucking goddamn um, hotel restaurant. I'm like, God damn it. I walked away from one hotel restaurant where at least some people might talk to me. Now I'm in this fucking loud, you know, they get the music and the conflicting audio issue and all this horse shit. And I just went right back. I didn't order. I asked the guy to put the fucking wrestling on the TV. And that was like a major surgery. So I just left. I'm like, fuck it all. And I went to see this movie. So there you go, folks. So Lisa Heather, whatever the fuck. Lisa Frankenstein. I enjoyed it. Good job, Diablo. You captured the spirit of 1989 so eloquently. Uh, I'm sure she made a bunch of goth chicks fucking happy. They can listen to their cure. They can put their fucking nylon stockings on or whatever the fuck. I like the goddamn movie. That's it. I just enjoyed it. So you can uh, do whatever the fuck you want. Disregard the Vampire Mike Messier documentary. Buy my fucking uh, goth chick novel, A Distance from Avalon, When the Dying and the Dead Reunite. Available on Amazon and KDP hardcover and paperback. You can subscribe to this channel or not. It's a free country. It's a free world. Good night.